So now the third component, that is the point scale. What in the world is that? All right. Two types of ways of scoring in the system. Remember, we use points. A digit, dot, three numbers, okay? So you can get some distinction between all those kids. So that all those A's you give out in the orchestra right now don't just blend into, like, nothing. You actually will see some distinction that you know is there as a director. You can talk about your kids. You know very finite differences between these kids. Now we can put numbers on that so other people understand it, like the kids and the parents and the administrators, if they so care to see that. So the point scale. There's two approaches in the system. One is if you have a program such that kids tend to be in groups based on their year in school, which is possible, I guess. Uh, or if you have a groups that tend to uh, if your juniors tend to be similar in level, you know what I'm saying, your, your seniors, if you have one band, one choir, you know, I, uh, one choir would be a little rare, but not that rare. Um, if you had that, you might want to grade within, a, by, by grade level, so that you, you know what, what your freshman level kids can sing, uh, over, over, over time. You know what that is. Put a number on it. Call it 9 for ninth grade. 9.000 is the beginning of ninth grade. 9.2, by the way, using that, you can equate to being a second month sophomore, if you can distinguish that. But 9.5, you know, by the middle of your freshman year, you should be able to do certain things based on your curriculum, based on what you're teaching people to do, right? And so those months can be broken down that way. And then if a kid's in his fifth month or at the semester break of a freshman year and he can't do certain things you've got set up as targets, um, then he should be scoring or she should be scoring a 9.5 and they, he or she comes in and scores an 8.7. They're back at eighth grade level here. They're slipping. You see, that's what the grade system's about for point scale. And that's the way this, this one is set up. Put 9, 10, 11, 12. The lowest number for the high school is a 9. The ninth grade, the highest is a 12. The middle school, 4 to 8. So that's one way of thinking. Now, let's say you don't have that situation. You've got a bunch of kids. You've got super talented sophomores, and they audition to get into that top wind ensemble or that top choir, and they're very capable. This is a little bit more normal with multiple ensembles, right? If you get four bands, four or five choirs, you might, you know, three orchestras, you might want to consider the ensemble level unless your scheduling system at your school locks kids in by what grade they are. And to a degree they do, depends on the system. So you might want to choose an ensemble level approach. You would check here under ensemble scheme. And, you know, four, five, they could go like beginner or uh, level. I mean, you might have four ensembles that might be... Uh, a nine, eight, seven, and a six. In other words, to get into the top wind ensemble or the top choir, you must score a 9.0. That's the standard. And then when you start assessing, you should maintain that 9.0 or greater to maintain an A level. And if you're not, you're scoring an 8.5 or an 8.0 or something, you're, you're behind the standard of the group that you auditioned for and got into, right? Same principle, you divide one number into the other and you find your grade. Okay, just to connect this whole point scale thing for you once, let's take a look at an ensemble scale selection where the top wind ensemble in this particular example is a seven, requires a 7.0 or greater to get into that ensemble. So here we have a score sheet of an etude test for someone named Olivia and uh, etude one, etc. And here you'll see the scores hovering just above and below uh, that seven margin, right? And uh, what I'd like to show you here, you'll learn about this when you get into the score sheet itself, is that when you listen to the performer, the most important thing to do is to first gather your thoughts and have an impression score. Not a range, yeah, a range, but get a feeling for that. When you listen to this kid, what is she? Is she a 6.5? Is it? You'll learn to attach numbers to impressions. Now, you want to use the impression range methodology that is described in uh, other areas of the uh, Score Sheet Academy. Uh, but notice the black box here. This is the first number you put in. You say, you know, I think she's an 8. 
Then you go through and you put in these breakdowns for tone quality, technique development, accuracy, and musicality. These are three um, categories in a customized sheet that was designed by a school. And, the, and as you put these numbers in, they add up in this box, right? And so what this person discovered was that their impression score was a tad bit higher when they broke it down into the categories. They realized they were overreacting a little bit to tone quality and musicality more likely um, than they were technical development and accuracy. All right? Realize these are uh, short A2. So that kind of a point difference I would have rectified in my mind one way or the other. This particular school chose to keep it in the same spot and leave that number there. Uh, they may be overreacting to this particular person, this flute player, who may have been at first chair in the past, right? Those things all enter our little brains when we're doing this stuff. So it's really a spot check. Uh, it's going back to your initial impression score that's so very important. So let's take a look at what that looks like in the classroom. Well, on the classroom side, we go down and find Olivia down here. And there's that score we were talking about, 7.080. Uh, and so that's the score that is divided then into the seven, which is the standard for the wind ensemble at this school, a seven level. And so she achieves 100%. She's staying on course. It took a seven to get into the ensemble. She's maintaining. Notice above her, another person who had a 5.2 is in the wind ensemble. Honestly, they must have had a rough summer. <laughs> um, and maybe there were other factors uh, in, in play. But that, that 5.2 then is uh, divided by 7, which is the standard, and this is what gives them that grade. And of course, when you click on these things, you can jump right to his score sheet instantly. So that's what the point scale thing's about on the ensemble side. So now we go to a grade scheme, not an ensemble scheme like we just saw. We're going to focus in on a student named Kip Blumson right here. Kip is a 4.473. This school, this high school, has set up the four years of high school as a standard so that one is a freshman, two is a sophomore, three is a junior, and four is a senior. So you see where Kip's at. And so how do we know this viola section here that Kip, what grade he is? Well, the, the system knows that when you put in the kids. Let's take a look at that. The way you find a student to check this student record, you simply go into the student view here and you, Kip, you type in Kip's name, Blumson. And he pops up right there. There's Kip. We look him up. And if we go to the edit screen, we'll see that, in fact, Kip Blumson is a 12th grader. Okay, a senior. And that's why your database, you put the year in school in there. And then the system will calculate the grade against that. That's the important part of that element, which we talked about earlier. So we see that Clip got a 4.4. 7, 3. So now we will check the classroom. So we jump back to the home page and click on classroom. Go back. So we jump back to the classroom page. And so to look at the classroom for this particular ensemble, we go back to the home page, click on classroom, our senior orchestra. We're looking at auditions and we display the data. You see that there's Clip, or is in there? Flip, <laughs> these names are made up, you know. We use them as models. Yeah, Kip Blumson, it's not a real kid. Anyway, uh, you see here the 4.473 against a 4.0 scale gives that senior a 100% a for a grade for that particular A2. So there's two sides to the house here, right? got all this data, these 4.00, these four digits numbers. This is what gives you distinction between kids, very finite distinction, and is able to drive data to track progress, depending on what number you call certain grades, if you're a grade system, or what number you require to get into a certain ensemble, if you use an ensemble system. But in the end, when you export the grades for this particular um, exam, what comes out is a percentage grade already calculated. In this case, we got some awesome seniors, it looks like, in the viola section. Um, and then if uh, you can upload a CSV file directly to your grading system, it be automatic. Otherwise, you've got a spreadsheet that you can simply go to your grading input at your school and put in those grades already calculated.